Good morning, everyone. So I did some epoxy work yesterday, and let's uh, let's this morning go over the pros and cons of epoxy. So again, I use this epoxy right here. I ordered online from a company down in Hamilton, and you comes in two parts, that part and that part. And you mix them three parts of this to one part of that. And you can mix them based on volume or based on weight. And I do it based on, again, weight using this little digital meter. And uh, when you mix them up, mix them up in a, a clean container and uh, stir it for four or five minutes before you use it. And I have, again, various uh, colors of, of um powdered dye that I can put in to, uh, to tint it any, any color that I want. And you can buy 50 different shades of this type of powdered uh, coloring. So what I used it for yesterday, I uh, mixed it up and did a pour about, what was it, around uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I used it to pour into the bottom of um, three of my keepsake boxes. And when you pour it into a self-contained vessel like this, box like this, if the box is completely sealed it's and it's level, you got to make sure it's level. If you do all that, uh, it pours in very nice. It makes a very nice bottom to your keepsake box. It makes it very easy to get in there and pick things up. I really like the way it looks, as opposed to sometimes doing the flocking. Now, I poured this yesterday at around 2. Today it's about 10 in the morning, so do not touch it. Do not put a finger on it. It's still sticky. Don't touch this stuff, especially the thicker you pour it. Give it at least 36 hours. You touch that, you're going to leave your fingerprint on it. Sure as, sure as can be. Okay, so I used that and I poured it into three of my keepsake boxes and they all look good and they're all self-contained and it stayed inside the box very nicely. I'm pretty happy about that. Now, on the other hand, I did pour some into uh, a piece of wood here that the knot didn't go all the way through, so I just poured it in and it looks pretty nice, okay? Um, now, I have to sand that off in order to use it. As soon as I sand it, start to sand it, this nice shiny surface is going to disappear because the sandpaper is going to scratch that all up. <laughs> to get that shiny blue surface back again, the way it shines right now, um, may not ever happen for me. Uh, you can uh, sand it, sand it, sand it with, uh, you know, with 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, 240, 500, 800, 1,000, maybe 1,500, maybe 2,000 um, grit sandpaper, which is basically polishing in order to get that shine back. And it might not ever shine as much as it's shining right now. So whenever you pour epoxy, you want to try and keep it. If you want that shiny surface without sanding, you got to keep that epoxy within the cavity that you're filling. Okay, obviously this one spilled out over to the side. Now... This uh, piece of wood, I wanted to do make a little um, cheese board out of. And this is the one that had the really big knot in it and the knot that went all the way through to the other side. So what I did is I, um, I taped up the board with four layers of tape, masking tape, uh, and then poured the epoxy onto the top. And that epoxy, after about six hours, went right through the hole and went right through all four layers of the uh, masking tape and dumped all over um, this portion of my table. It's just something that doesn't work very good, at least not for me. Um, sometimes you'll see other YouTubers putting a little bit of masking tape on and then filling in a cavity. I think it's hooey. I don't think it ever works. Um, so I think what you have to do sometimes is you have to uh, take this as a couple stage approach. And what I probably should have done was just poured enough in that it filled in the cavity right through to the other sides, so, but it didn't fill the cavity up to the top. And then there's less pressure for the weight for it to seep down. 
the other thing, and then once it dries after 36 hours, put in a second level to bring it up to the surface here. Um, the other thing I tried to do is I, I tried to re-put on the all new masking tape and then clamp the piece down onto a spare piece right here in order to put some pressure uh, from the underneath side uh, to stop the uh, stuff from leaking, the epoxy from leaking out. But I don't know if that's worked. If it's leaked out again and gone through that masking tape, what I've probably done is epoxy this piece to the scrap piece. We're gonna find out right now if, if that actually worked or not. Oh, and it didn't. Oh, that's good. So, uh, there you have that, that layer of uh, masking tape worked. Like you said, the first layer, it just came out after, I said I put on four layers of tape and it still leaked between the different layers and came out and poured a substantial amount over the table. So I'm gonna take that masking tape off and uh, sand the back of it, get some of the rough stuff off, and then I'm gonna reapply the masking tape. I'm gonna mix up another little batch and I'm gonna try and fill this cavity so it comes right to the very top and maybe uh, it won't leak out. And then obviously after that, it's sanding, 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 and sanding some more in order to get rid of all the epoxy that shouldn't be where it is and get a nice clean surface to it, okay? And again, it may never come out to be as shiny as, as that is. So those are the pros and cons of masking. Um, you gotta mix it properly. You gotta pour it into a self-contained area that won't leak out and where you're pouring it into must be 100% level. You gotta make that surface level the way I did there, or the epoxy is going to, uh, it's gonna slope down to its, uh, the level that gravity takes it, and it won't be level with the level of your wood itself. And don't touch, do not touch it for at least 36 hours, because it's gonna take at least that amount of time to harden. The stuff doesn't dry, it hardens. So don't touch it would be my best advice to you. Okay, good luck with anything you're going to epoxy.